Um, I will entertain a motion to uh, approve the minutes of March 2nd and April 20th. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. second. There's a second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I will. Uh, I'll, I'll read it first. This is a resolution adopting a complete streets policy for the city of West Dallas. I will turn it over to, I'm guessing you two guys are here for a reason. Yeah, thanks, okay. thanks everyone. Um, this is Tony Giron, he's our planner and he's gonna be presenting the uh, complete streets uh, resolution before council tonight. We are recommending approval. We had given a previous presentation back in April to the Safety and Development Committee and it was well received there. Since that time, there have been some, some changes to it. Um, which Tony will get into more, more in more detail. So with that, I'll turn it over to Tony. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Alderman. So today I'm gonna to talk about complete streets as both a concept and a policy. So what are complete streets? They're streets for everyone, no matter who they are or how, how they travel. So these are streets for people walking, biking, driving, transit riders. These are streets that are safe, comfortable, and convenient, again, for everyone. Incomplete streets are unsafe, especially for people of color, low-income communities, older adults and children. This is from a study called Dangerous by Design that takes a look at uh, crash data from all over the country. So many of our streets, uh, not just in West Dallas, but um, can be considered inadequate. So sometimes we have streets that don't have sidewalks or are too dangerous to cross on foot or can be unsafe for people on bicycles. But fact is, we do know how to build right. This is an image of National Avenue, which is an award-winning corridor uh, with green lanes and uh, brightly colored medians and curb bump outs, tactile pads at the corners. Yet too many times our roads turn out like this. And this is not in West Dallas, but just to show an example of how we as a society, and, and especially in this country, have been building our roads for automobiles uh, for far too long without consideration of our more vulnerable users of the road. Or sometimes our sidewalks end up looking like this, uh, that don't connect to a wider network of sidewalks. The solution to this is the complete streets policy. So complete streets policy ensures that the entire right of way is planned, designed, constructed, operated, and maintained to provide safe access for all users. In other words, every time there's a new road construction project, we want to consider the more vulnerable users of the road. We want to make sure that we're building sidewalks that are adequate for people in wheelchairs or pushing strollers. Uh, and just as a, an add-on, this year, the federal gov government plans to uh, pass a Complete Streets Act, which will provide funding for municipalities that have a, a Complete Streets policy in place. Now, the West Allis Complete Streets policy, some highlights, that uh, it formalizes a, an existing process. We're already doing this. This is the most important element of this. It's uh, the engineering department meets with planning and many other departments and we look through every uh, new project that's happening in the next year or two, and we talk about how these projects can include elements of complete streets. So this policy would simply be formalizing. Two, two decibels higher, please, that blower's going. Sorry again. about that. Uh, another important element of this complete streets policy is that we'd be forming a committee that would be meeting twice per year. So instead of meeting once per year like we already do, we'd be meeting twice per year, and this would be a subcommittee of the Capital Improvement Committee. Also, the improvements that can be made through complete streets are modest in size and low in cost. If you look at the image below, you see what we call paint and post projects. So instead of building an expensive curb bump out uh, with rerouting the irrigation to make sure that the water goes into our sewer drains, you can build uh, these with these bollards, reflective bollards and paint uh, that's much uh, less in cost. And this policy also has an emphasis on public engagement. So if, if for whatever reason the community does not want to see an element of complete streets on, on their block, then we won't do it. It's as simple as that. 
So we've made a few changes since we introduced the policy to the safety and development committee. So the, all of the shalls in the document will be, have been changed to shall endeavor to. So that just provides us with a bit more flexibility on how we implement the complete streets policy. Also the creation of the subcommittee. Uh, it, it's now uh, a subcommittee of the uh, capital improvements committee instead of a new group so that we make sure that the the interests of the capital improvements committee are taken into account. We're also no longer creating a complete streets handbook or adopting a design guide, though adopting a de design guide is something that we strive to do. We just don't want to um, hold ourselves to the fire and make sure that, that we have to. Uh, also, exceptions to the policy. Uh, previously, they were incorporated at, at the and listed at the very end, but now they've been incorporated throughout the policy. So, for example, if a complete streets element is excessive in cost, or if it's a part of an emergency repair, then that's considered an exception, and we wouldn't do it. And with that, we welcome any questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Alderman Grisham. Um, Tony, I just have one question on that. You said if there's a design element that a particular residential street wouldn't want, what is the criteria that we're basing on the numbers? So say we've got 12 houses. Four of them want it, the rest don't. Is it majority rules? How does that go? So the subcommittee would provide their recommendation, for example, if there's no sidewalk on that street and we want a sidewalk, uh, the subcommittee would recommend to add a sidewalk. But if the, if the block, the residents don't want to have a sidewalk, and um, then we simply wouldn't do it. But if you're saying it's a toss-up, then um, we would have to look at other factors and, and as far as cost or uh, if, it, if it makes sense in the grand scheme of the network of sidewalks within that area. Okay. All right, thank sure. you. Alderman Spancy. A couple <laughs> questions. Um, how many sidewalks do we have currently in the city that do not have handicap accessibility? Zero. Okay, so we're, we're good on that. Um, how many sidewalks east of Highway 100 are not complete sidewalks? What do you mean by complete? That we, don't, that we, that we have blocks that, that don't have sidewalks. Well, we have about 36 miles of street that do not have sidewalks. Some are like in Alvin Roads neighborhoods. Most are on the west end. Most are on the west end. Okay. Some are elsewhere. The sidewalks that would be put in, who pays for that? It's the city. I, I wouldn't have a special assessment rate for okay. sidewalk or without sidewalk. So, so the residents wouldn't have to pay to have the sidewalk put in. So, okay, that's what I was wondering. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, I'll have oh. Mr. Chair. Alderman Daly. Is uh, this program, like I say, I do uh, like it, but how is it going to be uh, run, you know, uh, in the future? Uh, will be, uh, in a way, that we're going to more directing the uh, some many issues, which I think the main drags, I think, are the uh, major problem, I believe, that we are uh, facing, you know? But once you start looking around the side streets, I don't think we really have maybe to modify certain things. I'm for, you know, but I think we could be limited for the uh, side streets, you know, in many areas within our city. But it's important that uh, we uh, explore the entirety of the uh, main streets. You know, some of the uh, world that flow of traffic is more is more pedestrian. Uh, attractions or walking, you know. To me, that would be the ideal situation to follow in the future, you know, that if it is something that we really want to do, you know. But uh, the uh, side streets, you know, uh, like I say, it could be some modifications. I don't know what could be, you know. But I think it should be directed more on the main, you know. I think that's where we are uh, facing the uh, problems, you know. But once we go into the side streets, I, I, I'm a little bit skeptical about it, really. I think we should invest uh, some money 
within our community here for the uh, welfare of the city where we experience heavy traffic, a lot of movements, so maybe pedestrians, you know, a little more people walking, you know. That's, I think, should be directed or concentrated. Let's, let, let, let's not get too, too spread out, you know, too thin, you know. We don't want to do that. That's, that's my opinion. Mr. Chair. I want to I want to piggyback on that. So I find that where we have most problems with traffic and stuff like that is on streets that are not controlled by the city. So any state highway, Highway 100 is terrible. The 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 stuff that I see going on Highway 100 on the weekends is appalling. And I know our police force is out there trying to take care of things, but how do we deal with streets like that that we can't control? but yet are a nuisance or a problem to the city and the residents here for safety as part of this program. That's what I'm getting at. Well, I mean, as, as part of this program, I mean, it is, um, you know, the state, and then Pete could probably back, back us up a little bit more on this, but um, with that, anytime the state does a project, you know, they're going to they're gonna have a public outreach, a public information meeting, and there's going to be probably different design options for whatever segment of, of the express or the, of the highway, Highway 100, it, you know, maybe resurfaced or redone. So, would we have a say in that? Yes. I mean, the city, the public would have a say, I guess, in the end result in listening not only to you know survey information or public information feedback that we get from constituents along that way, but um, we would also have a say ultimately in the end result of whatever changes taking place along you know said corridor okay but yeah. but the state still has final say so like if we've got a concern and they don't want to take care of it or, or take it in consideration we still get overridden right um I mean, ultimately i mean i, I think they're, they're they also want to build to um, a best practice to what you know the community does want for itself so i mean they're going to listen and um you know in one case several years ago they were talking about expanding highway 100 to you know additional lanes um from what it is now to even wider and the city spoke up you know and we had a voice and they, they listened there were several different op, um, alter you know uh, options to choose from and ultimately you know fortunately that that project didn't come to fruition okay. so yeah. all right thank you mr. chair uh, I just sure. have a follow-up question for you of the 36 miles that Pete had mentioned what is our goal what is our target goal do we have a target area that we're going to begin um, how are we assessing this is it based on safety? Is it based on, you know? At this point, as I understand it, our, uh, we have roads on, our, on a schedule, correct, right. Pete? And so it will be. Based on the condition. Right. Okay. So it's going to, in most of the bad roads are on the east end of town. Okay. So we have a targeted priority the area. Sewers are 100, 110 years old. Mm -hmm. These sewers are only 50. So that kind of coincides with my follow-up on that. So it's really based on the scheduling of what already needs to be repaired, and that's how we're going to adapt this new uh, look or complete the street. Okay. Correct. All right. Thank you. I Mr. Chair. Oh, I'm sorry. Alderman Rankin. Mm -hmm. Why did we feel that we needed a new street program? Um, Tony, this is more or less it's not a, a new street program. It's more or less... Um, Accepting the you know the philosophy that Tony's presented here, the, the policy that's more or less, you know, seeking transparency in what we're doing and what streets are selected, what streets are recommended for additional accommodations, whether it may be a sidewalk or a bump out or something along that line. Um, so it's it's more or less what engineering and planning are already doing, but it's just making it more official and you know into an actual you know policy document that. You know the subcommittee and the actual capital improvements committee can follow, um, and it, there's also engagement. You know, notifying uh, you know residents of of the changes, survey data that will be collected mm -hmm. on on what the changes are and what. Do we have you know. a policy in place? Uh, we we don't currently have a complete streets well, we policy. We don't have one no. currently. Right. I see, and it sounds like um, basically it's up to the committee to make the recommendations and the subcommittee and we're taking into consideration the, the constituents as well for their input yes yes yeah well, that's yes. pretty much what we do right now that's it what is it is yeah it just it just it's bringing more paper. awareness to you know uh, the, the idea of that there's several different forms of 
transportation, you know, not just motorists and cars, but there's also bicyclists, there's pedestrians. There's neighborhoods we're trying to build, and um, we're, we're looking to, again, to sort of our, the image of our city all, all ways into this within our comprehensive planning and economic development and, um, you know, the, the national award-winning street that, you know, engineering department brought to us with National Avenue. Those are that, that type of award-winning philosophy and, and image identity is what, really what we're trying to create here. And it may not be, it's not going to be for every street, um, but, you know, we do want to give it, give certain streets consideration, you know, through our capital improvements program. Okay. Mr. Chair, I have one more follow-up, and you brought up the fact. Um, Is she done? Are you done? No, I wasn't. Oh, oh I'm so sorry. I'm you so sorry that you were. Sidewalks, sidewalks. Um, that is kind of the um, uh, what shall I say? Uh, uh, you're indicating basically that the areas that don't have sidewalks, uh, they they have a problem. And I would tend to agree with that in, in, in several of the instances in our, in our particular area. Um, but what can we do about that if, if the streets don't have sidewalks? Uh, Tony? So this would have the, the subcommittee recommending sidewalks, for example, and then we would be working with the planning and zoning team with engineering would be working with residents to educate residents on the benefits of sidewalks and hopefully sway them in a direction that would uh, have not, that, not promoting them exactly if there is if there isn't a sidewalk in that area you're trying to say that you're going to try and convince the residents to have sidewalks we could we could how, we could try we... to make that we could make that recommendation but in the end if the neighborhood doesn't want sidewalks on their street then it's unlikely that the capital improvements committee is going to authorize sidewalks on that street. It won't happen. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Alderman Grisham. Thank you. And Alderwoman Renke, I'm sorry for the interruption. Uh, my follow-up was kind of what you had stated about National Avenue. We have an award-winning design, but in these other design elements, I just want us to be mindful going forward because I'll give an example. The laterals were not done on National Avenue. The majority of them were not because there wasn't grant monies available at the time. And although the look is very nice to the brickwork that we have, imagine now we're going to be ripping that up. And I did actually ask, do we have somebody on staff that does this brickwork? Do we have the supplies? Did we buy extra, for example? So aesthetically going forward as well, we have to be mindful of these elements and what designs we put in, and we don't end up in the same situation that we end up when the, the light bulbs weren't available for the street lights. So that would be just kind of something that I would like noted. And that type of language is worked into the policy. Okay, all right, fantastic, thank you. I, I have a comment, if I may. Um, in your slideshow, you said, um, safe for everyone and safe for all users but then in your item six whereas it says whereas the city recognized that a safe reliable and comprehensive transportation network is a right of all residents and visitors of west dallas regardless of ability age gender race ethnic ethnicity or income can't we just put a period behind the word west dallas that is for everyone Sixth whereas, you mean? Sixth whereas, about five eighths of the way down in the body of your um, resolution. Just put a period at the end of West Dallas. I mean, if, if we need to simplify the language, then I suppose we could. We just we want to be as I guess. Uh, right, but but it's <laughs> you're saying it's for everyone, for users in here. I I would say just leave it at West Dallas. All users, something along that line. Oh. Uh, for all residents of and visitors to West there. Dallas, done. So we'd have to amend it, uh, amend it, or amend it, <laughs> amend it, if the committee so desires. I, I agree. Okay, well, I'll make a motion to 
whatever that would be called, the sixth whereas of your resolution to put a period at the word, after the word West Dallas and drop all of the other regardless of and all the groups there. Second. Okay, Mr. Chair, so can we have discussion? Oh, well, certainly. Thank I forgot you. that part. Okay. Um, can you just offer enlightenment as to why the language is put in there so we have an understanding because it doesn't bother me the particular language because it encompasses all. Um, I know we can simplify it, but what, what's the difference? Oh, in my presentation, I noted the report from Dangerous by Design that um, the most vulnerable users of the road, sure, they're pedestrians and bicyclists, but the people that have been most affected by high crash rates have been people of color, low income, uh, and everyone else listed in here. Yep, age. Where do you so get that's that why from? I made a specific because call read, out to those groups. I read that most vehicle strikes of people, more people die getting hit by SUVs than by lower cars. SUVs are hitting you from here to here, and the smaller cars are hitting you from the waist down. So I, I question where you're getting that. It's the dangerous by design study. What I just said or what you're telling me? That's where I'm getting my information from. That's that's what's informing the presentation and the policy. Okay. Anyone else? We have a motion and a second to put a period at the end of West Dallas. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Uh, motion carries. <clears throat> I believe, was that it? Uh, uh, Alderman Talley. Yeah, first. I have a question going back a little bit on the, uh, on the paragraph in regard to the uh, questions of uh, genders, you know, that uh, why, why are we using uh, those paragraphs, you know, on, on this proposals, you know, I mean, uh, people of color or people of different ethnic groups, why? why we apply that, you know, why it's part of the uh, proposal. I mean, I'm just, I'm saying that something that's being, should be more of a generality, not not picking someone, you know. I mean, basically that's, that's what I saw and that's what I read before when I got this in my uh, email, you know. So, so I had that questions in mind, you know, why, why we have to put that in, really? Why have to be applied? I mean, that's that, that's my question. To me, it's a very simple question <clears throat> to take that out, really. I, think I, I, I don't think it belongs there, really. I, you know, accidents, anything that occur, I mean, that happens to anybody. So if, it, if the percentage is more, well, that's fine. But I don't think it should, still it should be shown on, on this presentation or, or on this proposal, really. I don't think it should. To me, it doesn't belong there, really. I mean, that's my own, again, my opinion. You know, to me, it doesn't belong there at all. That's what your motion just eliminated, correct? Yes. Right, and it's yep. four to one. Yep. Yep. That's, that's right. Okay. Mr. So, Chair? Yes. Alderman uh, Grisham. Are you finished, Alderman yeah, Vitale? Was that just more of a statement, or did you expect an answer? Well, I expect an answer just as well. Yes. Okay. Um, did you want to take the opportunity to do that? Because I do have a follow-up to that. In light of our timing, I think the motion was already made. Uh, the vote went through on that. However, I do want to just highlight this living, uh, the, the street program was based on studies. So I think that Tony gave the answers and whether you agree whether it should embody or encompass a particular ethnicity or not, it's really, those were the facts, that's the data. That's why we're looking at this. So, I mean, I invite anyone to take a ride in areas where the streets are not taken care of or there's not accessibility and see maybe there is a demographic uh, involved in that, whether it's language barriers, whether, you know, it is income-based. So, I mean, I don't see that we're actually spending any time on that, to be honest with you. We're, we're looking forward to developing and making the streets safer why are we as a committee taking time to, to point out whether it's ethnic related or not? So well, that's, that's, that's just my commentary on it. And I think we should just move forward. You know, the fact that is that 
You have to realize you talk, we have a best street not drivable in West Dallas. You just stayed in that. Where? In West Dallas, we have streets today were not drivable, really. We, we're not in that conditions for what I know. You know, if you start going maybe other parts of the county, maybe you find some non-drivable streets. But in West Dallas, we don't have that. So my question here is the fact that I don't like to see using verbiage that really, in generality, doesn't really affect what we're doing here. It should not be a color. It should not be ethnics put on this pre presentations, this proposal. That, that's fine. If, if you want to want to keep it on, that, that's the way it should be. But that's not very appropriate, what we try to do for the city. I, I don't care if accidents happen more to uh, colored people and any other genders. I don't care. But I don't think it should be <clears throat> part of the presentations. That's my gripe, and that's my question. And I think there's some illegality on that. If we're talking about improving our austerity, our city here. Doesn't should be adding color or ethnic group on that. That's my problem. Thank you. Okay, and Mr. Chair, I'll just add again. This was based on a study, so I thank you for your presentation. It was thoughtful and informative. Okay. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Is there a second? Second. second. Suzette, Suzette, oh. did it. I already seconded. Yep. Oh, okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, we're adjourned.